Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, I'm going to do another segment on moving off-grid, things you need, the necessities. What are you going to do when you're going to move out? What are you going to have to take with you? All that kind of stuff. We're still going to dangle in a little bit today on uh, electricity yet. I had a few uh, comments and questions that uh, I want to address on that. And then we're going to move on to another uh, different, complete topic, but uh, still a very important target topic for moving off grid. And this is stuff that I'm telling you that I learned from experience in the School of Hard Knocks. And boy, did some of them really knock hard. <laughs> they, they hurt. Uh, Things you want to learn down the line. And I've had a, one question was about uh, um, Chinese hybrid controllers, and I have said it before. Um, don't be mistaken when you think you're getting a hybrid controller that shows uh, uh, connectors for both uh, wind and solar. Because you cannot run both wind and solar through the same controller at the same time. The hybrid means you can use it for one or the other. It'll work for one or the other. Now, it doesn't say that anywhere a lot in the uh, um, ads that you get from the uh, foreign-made, <laughs> without hurting anybody's feelings, uh, foreign-made um, electronics. And none of them, none of them, actually meet the expectations or what they claim they're going to do. And I've said that before. Just like this uh, um, Predator, this is also made overseas. And see, they put the big 6500 there in big numbers. So everybody goes, oh, I'm going to get me a 6500 watt um, generator. No, you're getting a 5500 watt generator. But, guess what? I can plug a tester into this and show you that even when it's running, you're not getting 5,500 watts. That's the maximum it'll, it'll put out, but it, it, it doesn't ever get up to that. And 6,500 watts is starting. That's what it does when it starts. Well, what do you care what it does when it starts? It's not going to give you anything um, for when it's running. When it starts, it's only a split second. That's it. And then it's running. So you got to watch out for them because they do that stuff. Now, I had a power jack inverter. Uh, actually, I had two of them. And I found out one of them was uh, modified sign. I had to change that to pure sign. And then I found out that the pure sign was dirty sign. It wasn't even uh, pure sine wave. And that's important. you got to have good pure sine wave in your inverter. Now remember that, very good pure sine wave inverter. Why? Well, all the electronics nowadays, computers, TVs, refrigerators, microwaves, anything like that that has uh, digital displays on them, uh, security camera setups, all that stuff. If you run it on modified or dirty sine wave, you will burn something out. They've got to have nice clean sine wave for those items to work properly and not get damaged okay so remember that okay the other um, st statement and uh, or comment I got was about um, utilizing uh, the DC uh, which is direct current DC stands for direct current AC stands for alternating current and normally with DC, you're talking about low voltage items like uh, 12 volt and 24 volt and stuff like that. And then when you're talking AC, you're talking 120 volts and 240 volts. And what's the difference between those two? Well, 120 volts is a standard outlet in your house. 240 volts is two of those put together in making one outlet for running something like a stove or a, um, a welder or 
um, air conditioning, some air conditioners run on uh, 240 volts. Now you've heard people say it's 110 or 220. Okay, now that that's not correct anymore. 110 and 220 um, AC voltage or AC um, circuits uh, no longer exist. That's old technology. That was uh, back in the days when they they had uh, individual wires running and wrapped around or, or clamped into these little white porcelain um, uh, semiconductors or non-conductors. And uh, they've upgraded all of the service to 120, 240. So there's no more 110, 220. So people that are talking that are talking very old stuff that doesn't exist anymore. So there's a little lesson in electricity. So remember your house powers are going to be uh, 120 or 240. 120 has one hot line and a neutral and a ground. Um, 240 has two hot lines and a neutral. Okay, now the ground is usually on the item itself or uh, in the panel box itself. So that's the difference. All it is is a, a 240 is uh, two 120s. And I'll show you that in a circuit panel, in a uh, breaker panel down the line because uh, it's smart to take your power off your system after you generate it. And then you come out of it right there with the two hot wires, one red, one black, and one white is the neutral. Okay, now you got two hot wires, red and black. That's going to be uh, bus bar one and bus bar two in your electrical panel. And those alternate, so you have one on one side and one on the other side, and one on one side and one on the other side. So you have two bus bars feeding 120 volts each. And then when you take a 240 volt breaker and you plug it into that, it, it goes across two of those uh, bus, bus bar connectors. One from the left side, one from the right side. And it combines them in the breaker itself and that gives you your 240. Alright. So, the other question. Uh, D, I was getting started on it. was uh, DC versus AC. Using DC more efficient than using AC. Um, not necessarily, but technically yes. Okay, why do I say that? All right, let's have a little um, example here. Let's take 12 volts DC and use it to power a uh, 13 watt LED bulb. Okay, now you remember yesterday in the last video, I told you all about Ohm's Law. So, watts equals amps times volts, or volts times amps. That e that's where your watts come from. Okay, so, we've got 13 watts and 12 volts. Now we want to know the amps. So, we divide 12 into 13, and we get 1.8. So that means it's going to need 1.08 amps to run that light bulb. Okay, now remember that. Write that down. That's with a 12 volt uh, battery powering a 13 watt LED bulb. It requires 1.08 amps. Okay, now let's jump up to AC. Got 120 volts. Same 13 watt LED bulb. Okay, 120 volts, 13 watts. Divide 120 into 13. Now we have 0 0.108. Or 1, 0.108. Okay, so that's one tenth of an amp compared to one amp on the 12 volt. So you're using one tenth of the current to, to do the same job, to run the same light bulb. Okay, so 
What's that mean? Well, that means that you can use smaller wire, smaller gauge wire, on the 120 volt because your amps are a lot lower. And on the 12 volt, you'll have to use a heavier wire, a heavier stranded wire, to perform the job. Okay, see that thing crawling right there? Remember that. That's a uh, what we call a uh, gypsy moth. And they see how he crawls in behind little crevices and things like that? They are everywhere. They swarm once a year here. And I'm going to show you a little secret on how to get rid of those things. How to keep them from uh, coming in. Got another one up there in the corner. And they can somehow, even through a closed door, they can squeeze underneath through the rubber and, and that stuff. And they can get through them. They, and they... Uh, We'll get into that in a little while. Let's get back to the electricity. Okay. So, we were talking about the uh, um, MC4 connectors. You remember the... Let's see if I got one handy here. Okay, these are MC4 connectors, but these are for... Um, combining two into one so you can get those for when you're going to series your um, solar panels now see this one has uh, believe it or not you might think that the one on the bottom here is the male and those are the female but it's the other way around <laughs> they don't go by the plastic they go by the little metal piece that's inside there so this is the male end, and this is the female end. Now on this one, these are the female ends, and this is the male end. That's the exact opposite. And that's because your, your positive and your negatives are opposite on the solar panels. So you can use these to combine two panels together in series and up the voltage on those. So... Um, if anybody needs any any of that stuff, and you can get them in twos, threes, fours, all sixes, eights, all that kind of stuff. Anybody needs those, let me know. I'll uh, include a link in a future video. All right, so we got that part cleared away. Uh, crimpers, the little metal pieces that come with the the bag of those, which I had over here. Oh, oh yeah, right here. Okay, so you see these little metal things in here. Okay, those have to get crimped onto the, um, the, the solar wire, the solar wires. And they do sell a complete crimping kit for it. But you don't have to spend that much money. Go to Harbor Freight and get yourself a pair of wire strippers with the crimpers in the handle right here. That's... That's why they get their weird shapes right here. Those are for crimping. Okay, so you can use these. You put the thing around the wire and use the the tips. So let me get that in focus. Use the tips here. And you can start bending the, the two little flaps over onto the wire. And then slip it into the closest one to the... Um, the center here the, to the pivot and then squeeze and crimp it Okay, that's uh, a lot cheaper way to go than to buy a Complete set now you could also use these for stripping the wire because you do have to strip the end of the wire and These will handle Let's see what's it say here All the way up to 10 gauge 10 12 14 16 18 on the right side so that's for solid and then for the stranded it's 12 14 16 18 now remember as the number goes up the size gets smaller all right so we got that all squared away and uh, I'm gonna put this stuff back uh, I got a sore arm that's really bugging the heck out of me right in the shoulder and from sleeping on it 
Okay, so it's been overcast all day with the threat of rain, but the rain never came, just cold and wind. And I'm still at 13.8 here. So plenty of power in my batteries. All right. So we're talking about gypsy moths. Write this down. You're going to want this, if you're, especially if you're going to a desert community. Um, those gypsy moths, they like um, nesting in uh, the Joshua trees. They, they lay their eggs in there. And uh, they every year in the late spring, they always swarm and they come everywhere. Okay. What do you do to get rid of them? Right here. Okay, see this stuff right here? It's made with 98% naturally derived ingredients. But see on the side right where my thumb is, it says natural orange extract. They hate orange. So remember one went right in there behind that bracket? Well, I'm going to put that on there. And that will actually kill him. See that guy up there? He's not liking it. Now the good stuff, the good thing about this is this actually is a soap, an oily soap. So when you spray it on wood, it soaks in and it stays. So the odor in here smells nice and fresh like oranges. But those moths don't like it. So they're going to move on to another place. And uh, that's what I want them to do. I want them out of here. I don't like them. I had them in my outhouse. The first night, day, I, uh, first morning, I went out to the outhouse. And I opened the door and two, three hundred of them come flying out of there. Uh, I just, I had to wait until I cleared the whole area out. And I used some raid flying insect killer, and uh, I just was spraying the heck out of them, and I killed a bunch, but didn't matter. The next day, they were all back again. Well, not the same ones, but so I used a whole can of raid. Did me no good. The next day, I went out there, and they were back, and I brought this out, and I sprayed everything inside of there, and it's been four days now and I haven't had any more of those little boogers in my outhouse so that's the way to do it write that down everybody you off gridders you guys are future off gridders you're going to want to have stuff like that for when you get off grid very important and uh I'm trying to teach you a little bit about uh different trades like electrical plumbing uh things like that you, you, you're you going to need to know that stuff if you're going off grid because you move off grid and you don't have all that stuff handy to you and if you try to hire somebody in town uh, to come out there they're going to charge you extra for the uh, drive out there and uh, it's going to be expensive repairs you need to know how to repair that stuff yourself and uh, I'll teach you some of the basics and that's what you're going to need to know and then you might need to meet some neighbors who um, ha already have some skills and you can uh, uh, trade skills with them. My favorite saying, I've got it written on the wall inside, uh, or actually I made a, a little poster type thing out of it. And uh, everybody, who, whoever sees it and reads it, likes it too, and they take pictures of it and all of that. But it says, uh, knowledge is a precious commodity. Possess it, you'll be rich. Trade it, you'll get richer. So, with that being said, I'm going to leave this one now and head inside. And maybe I'll have to do another all-nighter on it. because That's the way it's been going. Is It starts uploading fast, and then all of a sudden it slows down. And uh, when it slows down, eight hours, nine hours later, I just say to heck with and go to bed. And post in the morning so don't forget your thumbs ups down there don't forget to share subscribe and save if you uh, want to keep this information for future use save it and uh, I appreciate it remember I get credit for all that stuff so uh, I could use the credits this is G bear signing off